I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trash Talk to that podcast where we get three Christmas episodes in a row because this week we watched The Pilot. Written by Stephen Moffat. Directed by Lawrence Gach or Gauch or, or I don't know. Goo, goo, and aired gauch. on April 15th, 2017. Thanks for stalling while I... <laughs> Well, you navigated to the page and I looked at the date because I forgot oh, it. Oh, we totally would have gotten away with it if you hadn't mentioned it. If it wasn't for you meddling kids. If it wasn't for your meddling kids. I had my Twitter account by the time this episode came out, so. Didn't you make your Twitter account in like 2015? Yeah, but this is the first time I like tweeted about Doc Who after watching it live. But before that, uh, I have a, a short little production s- snippet that I want to share that uh, the original title for this episode, like until, like until pretty close to when it was transmitted, actually was uh, the girl with the star in her eye. And a lot of people were like, "What could it mean? What does it mean?" And then Moffat changed the name to the pilot uh, right before he got to release because he's like, you know, this episode kind of like almost reintroduces you to Doctor Who. It's like it's basically a good place to start from if you know nothing about Doctor Who. Like that's the point. Like it's supposed to be like a good jumping on point, which is why it's called the pilot. Yeah, that's something I'm going to kind of touch on at the end. This is basically like a soft reboot of Doctor Who. But the softest of the soft <laughs> reboots we've had. Because <laughs> we've had Hugh Clara's multiple- theme at the end of the episode. <laughs> Cute Clara's theme the instant they go into the TARDIS. Oh, I didn't notice it there. I noticed at the end when the doctor was like, you know, sometimes you wipe people's minds and you get your mind wiped by people. And the her theme kicks in. Yeah, no, the instant they went into the TARDIS, it started playing Clara's theme. And I'm like, why is it playing Clara's theme? It's it's the TARDIS. Because she's the doctor, remember? <laughs> I guess. She has her own TARDIS now. She's off doing things. Through space and time. (laughs) 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 Steven! Only the most glorious of writers could have given us that. That's not true. Literally any of them could have given us that. Where's my Pip and Jane Baker version? (laughs) Well, anyway, I thought it would be illuminating to skim back to 2017 to see what my original... Uh, re- Skim. You mean scroll, <laughs> scroll for, for like years. ten minutes through Twitter? Yeah, because Twitter's interface is impossible to navigate. Well, anyway. the new one is actually worse than the old one. Yeah, well, that's like that's got to be some sort of unwritten law, right? That every time you revise your UI, it's got to be worse <laughs> than the last time you did that. I've never seen any website revise their UI and me go like. Oh, yeah, I like the new UI way better than the old one. Uh, I'll, I'll show you one that I actually worked on uh, after this. Ep- I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to give away, like, some stuff about myself. But I'll show you one after we finish recording. All right. Well, anyway, I thought it would be interesting to see what my original reaction to this episode. And this entire season, because for this entire season, I did one-sentence reviews of all the episodes. Oh, wow. So thought it would be interesting to compare that to how I reacted now. So I, I, I scrolled, like Keon said, for like 10 minutes <laughs> to find this. I posted on April 16th, 2017. The pilot, uh, not the worst, not the best, but what's in the vault? Question mark. And then immediately after I posted a tweet, if you want to hear Trust Your Doctor on the pilot, if we stick to the schedule, you only have to wait until September 29th, 2019, which according to my calculations is the day this is going out. So you know what? Go me. Two and a <laughs> half years out. I predicted it correctly. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take applause at the end of the show. <laughs> to hold her applause till the end? What is this? <laughs> anyway, I think I actually liked it a little better on rewatch than I did uh, originally. Yeah, I did. I really liked this episode. I did too, actually. I found very few faults in it rewatching it this time. Not to say there weren't any, but I found very few. And I enjoyed it. So I guess that's yeah. that's uh time to just get get right into it then. The episode yeah. begins with Bill coming into the doctor's office and he's just got a cup of sonic screwdrivers on his table. We find like out a through, mug. Yeah, we find out through the dialogue that the doctor's been working at this university, a la what's his name from Shada <laughs> <laughs> for Professor, fifty years. Professor Kronos. <laughs> Oh yes, Chrono or whatever. Something what? like that. The like really obvious name. <laughs> I, 
I also I found out that it was uh, Robert Holmes that wrote uh, Carnival of Monsters and not Terry Nation, as I had joked. Was it last week or two weeks ago? Yeah, sometime recently. Found out it was actually Robert Holmes and not Terry Nation. Yeah, that episode, as far as I remember, didn't seem to carry any of the Terry Nation trademarks. <laughs> so. Except maybe the Drashig name. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's true. But anyway, Bill comes in. The doctor's been teaching there for 50 years, apparently. Stephen Moffat building him some nice b- time in case anyone wants to write like extra stories to the 12th doctor they've got this whole 50 year period to play <laughs> with in case anyone wants to write angry fan mail with Stephen Moffat complaining that he didn't put any time shenanigans in, in one of his episodes <laughs> in case Big Finish wants to try squeeze some stories in between some other stories he's <laughs> got 50 years to work with <laughs> this one's for you Big Finish <laughs> You think TV writers like specifically write plot points specifically like for Big Finish to to come in and put and put stories in? I how do I say this? <laughs> I don't expect it to be true, but I would not be surprised if it was. So the doctor's like, "Why do you come to my lectures?" And she's like, "I enjoy them." And he's like, "Yeah, but you're not a student here. You have to wonder how the doctor figured that out." But She's like, I'm not a student. Yeah, I work s- selling chips. And then she tells the story about how she liked this girl in the class that the doctor was teaching. And so she would always give her extra chips at lunch. And then she realized that she was fat. And she was like, I fatted her. And the doctor's like, I don't know how this is related. And, and Bill's like, yeah, it, it kind of got away from me <laughs> in the middle of there a little bit. And, and this entire backstory is like delivered extremely fast. You have to be on the ball to pick up what's going on here yeah but the 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 main thing that i think this introduces um is that bill is lesbian which is then touched on and elaborated uh, elaborated um, more later on so even, even if you miss it here it's fine it makes i think it also makes her the first like explicitly non-heterosexual companion well of no the doctor. i mean most of them we didn't even touch on whether they were you know heterosexual homosexual or, or I, that's why I said like explicitly non-heterosexual. Like it's explicitly stated that she's not. Sure, I guess you could make the case that like Adric. <laughs> and, and, well, we don't know. Like most of them, we didn't touch on their sexuality. And I guess like all of them could be bisexual, but this is like explicitly. <laughs> but like in this episode, it's explicitly confirmed that she's only homosexual because she says like explicitly like i don't look at men like i don't like men so unless she's lying through her teeth (laughs) (laughs) under her breath (laughs) to herself so the doctor offers to bill uh, to become her tutor yeah i like the reason he gives here he says that most people or at least people that he teaches um, look confused when they encounter something they don't know, but Bill uh, looks like happy or excited or something like that. Yeah, he says that most people frown, but she smiles. Right. And then we get a very, very Stephen Moffat-esque lecture from the doctor yeah. <laughs> about time. <laughs> it deeply hurt me as a physicist watching this. I was like, no, this hurts. But it's whatever. like pottery. It rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a line in here somewhere where Bill's like, how are poetry and physics the same? And the doctor's like, they are, they just are, or something like that. He says they, they both rhyme or something. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. <clears throat> the, look, my biggest takeaway from this lecture is that it's never going to get better than cutting my toenails. Cutting my toenails is going to be the greatest experience of my life. The only thing I got from this lecture was TARDIS means life. <laughs> Yeah, there's some good scenes with that later on where, like, they say TARDIS and they're like, okay, so he means, like, life. <clears throat> but remember, Susan named the TARDIS. Yes, I noticed you put that, like, four times in your <laughs> summary. <laughs> the Doctor never claims to have made up the name in this story, does he? He just kind of says that's what it's named. No. no. But let's just touch on this again because of how, like, absurd it is that, like, Susan named the TARDIS... And the Time Lords adopted that name. Like, this is a very... The TARDIS, like, moniker is a very recent thing in their history. <laughs> and it was created by, like, a young girl. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was a case of parallel development. I mean, she really just... Like, she just says, like, I made up the name from the initials. So it's, it's like, highly 
improbable that she was the only person in Gallifrey in history to notice that the initials were like pronounceable, right? Right. Wait, so you're saying that the accurate, like the name TARDIS, get, came before time and relative dimensions in space? No, time and relative dimensions in space was just the name of the TARDIS. Because Susan's exact line is that she made up the name TARDIS from the initials, time and relative oh. dimension in space. So she didn't come up with the time and relative dimensions in space thing. She just came up with the fact that you could call it a TARDIS, which is why I'm saying it's like highly improbable. She was the only one who noticed that, right? I guess if that's how you want to take it. I never got that she made up. I thought she just made up the entire thing. Her exact line is, (laughs) I made it up from the initials. So Maybe she made up the the name itself as well and then made up that from the initials. (laughs) You're stretching a bit there. Anyway, there's actually more about the TARDIS's name, weirdly, in this episode later on. Well, so Bill, I guess, has moved on from... A uh, chip eating lady to this uh, new girl that she just like stares at at a party. <laughs> they, her name is Heather, but there's a scene where the two of them like see each other and they just like stare at each other in the middle of the party. All their interactions with each other are like extremely awkward. I guess kind yeah. of to make you think that like Heather has an alien parasite in her eye. Yeah, because she's got a star. Just, it's she actually just has heterochromia. Yeah. I remember when this the, was a big <laughs> fake out. When the initial, the original name for this episode was announced, you know, the girl with the star in her eye, a lot of people on the subreddit were like, does it mean she's got a literal star in her eye? Like, fusion producing star, like somehow sci fi into her eye? And then the episode came out, they're like, wow, we were pretty dumb for thinking that. <laughs> remember in uh, Spider Man 3 when you think Spider Man has the venom <laughs> parasite in him, but he's actually just acting like that? out of his desire to act like a total D-bag. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people forget that. <sighs> uh, kind of reminded me of that. A bit. Well, so the do- Bill follow- follows the doctor into the basement, and he's got like a vault of some sort there. And uh, welcome to the overarching plot for this season. What's in the vault? So this is it, huh? I didn't even like think twice about this scene well what do you think is in the vault <clears throat> another vault <laughs> it's all the missing episodes of doctor who the doctor's, <laughs> the doctor's just keeping them hidden from our universe <sighs> well i was gonna make another joke about that but it's not gonna top that so i'm not even gonna try <laughs> And Bill, uh, Bill sees Nardole and the Doctor being kind of sketchy. Yeah. Nardole is back. Hell yeah! I seriously hope he's he's a regular. Companion he is this well. For this season. Just say he's a regular character. All right, so he's kind of like Jackie and Mickey in season one. Yeah, kind of. I think that's a good way to put it. All right, it's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, like I just want Nardole. <laughs> So we find out, I think there's there, there well, there's a time skip, but I think in the midst of that, we kind of find out that Bill uh, is living with her stepmom mm-hmm. because her real mom is dead. Yeah. Yeah. And, this and is where, it's like not, she's like not really her stepmom anymore because her father either divorced her stepmom or died. I don't think it's made clear what happened to her father. Was, it, was like that her godmother or am I just making that up? No, I think it's her, her stepmom because when when uh, she's explaining what the doctor is, she's like, just like you're my stepmom, he's like my step tutor or whatever. So Right, yeah. This is where we get like some of the, or we get like teased for probably some of the upcoming like family drama here because Bill's stepmom does not know that she's gay. Mm-hmm. And that's, we don't yeah. get like the resolution of that in this. Her stepmom also leaves the house a lot to go to bars to try to pick yeah. up guys. Kind of like Fred's mom from the Fred oh my God. In videos. Why is that the reference you chose to make? <laughs> And <laughs> check out Triple Play, our movie trilogy podcast. Returning soon, actually. And and now that we're mentioning things that are coming soon, 
check out our wait 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 wait, wait are we announcing this now <laughs> well we announced it last week we haven't announced the name yet <laughs> we're not announcing the name okay we're just reiterating what it is we're starting a science fiction and fantasy and probably also horror when we run out of things to watch podcast it's coming out soon We've done, like, almost no work on it. <laughs> Tweet at Decorative Vegetable your guesses for what the first show we're watching for that is, just so Keon has to shift through all of them. I'll give you a hint. It starts with an S, and it ends with a Tarkops. I thought you could say it starts with an S and ends with an S. That would have been better. <laughs> so, so, Bill tells the doctor that she never met her mom, and has no pictures of her because she, uh, I think, died when Bill was, was three, I think. The doctor immediately goes, hmm, no pictures. <laughs> Here's a way I can rose myself into this, like, manipulator-like rose. <laughs> I, yeah, I even wrote in my notes, like, <laughs> uh, inevitable, like, Stephen Moffat does Father's Day <laughs> when... <laughs> Well, this is Stephen Moffat does Rose for the third time. Second time, sorry. So. Yeah, what was the first time, Amy? Yeah. The girl who waited. That's Amy's yeah. nickname, not the name of the story. It was the 11th hour. So the doctor goes back, takes a bunch of pictures, and then the stepmom just finds a box of pictures of with Bill's mom. I almost called her Rose, so oops. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's like, wow, these are great. Wonder where they came from. She sees like a blurry doctor like in the background of one of the pictures. <laughs> I guess she just shrugs it off. He does look that old, so yeah. maybe that's how she justifies it. She gives, we get a Christmas scene where she gives the doctor a rug for Christmas and he's like, I, I haven't gotten you anything. She's like, oh, that's okay. And then he, he, I guess when he goes out to take the pictures, he puts the rug like under the TARDIS and Bill comes in and she notices the rug under the TARDIS. She's like, I thought you said you had to use a crane to like lift the police box. The doctor's like, wait, what? So Bill's noticing all these things that are a little suspicious. Right, and meanwhile, Heather is also noticing some things around campus, like a puddle of water. Was that puddle on campus or just like in the city? Oh, just yeah, randomly? it must have been like nearby. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Bill sees Heather like freaking out. She's like, are you freaking out about something? And Heather's like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Bill's like, okay, so what is it? She takes her to see the puddle. And Bill doesn't see what's wrong with the puddle. And then Heather is just like kind of a weirdo because she's bit. just like, look in this puddle and tell me what's wrong with the ref your reflection. And Bill's like, yeah, I can tell something's wrong, but like, what is it? And Heather's like, I'll tell you next time I see you. Maybe she just leaves. <laughs> Bill's like, what? And then we get like a little montage, I guess, of time going by. And then yeah. Bill meets Heather again at the puddle. She's like, Heather's like standing there staring into the puddle. Yeah, Bill is sort of behind a fence and Heather's like, come here. And Bill's like, only if you promise not to just like totally bail. This time. <laughs> she's like, sure, I promise. And it, it, lo and behold, as soon as Bill gets there, she's not there. But as Bill's walking away, we see that she's been dragged into the puddle. Because the first time we see the puddle, we see like, we hear an, uh, an alien voice going like pilot acquired. Yeah, sounds almost Silurian-esque. <laughs> In a way. Well, there is a very strange, weird throwback to a completely different, like, throwaway alien race. Well, the Silurians didn't become so throwaway, like, three stories later, but good old Mavellans coming back. Oh, yeah. Who would have thought the Mavellans would come back? Not me. <clears throat> well, you know, this is... <laughs> You, anyone watching, really, or any Doctor Who fan can can thank me for this because I pray mm. to my God, Stephen Moffat, mm. every day, giving him the strength to to bring back old classic villains like the Mavellans. <laughs> do you like sacrif do you like sacrifice? Do Dalek sacrifices to Stephen Moffat? <laughs> Load up a little Dalek figurine with like dynamite or something like Sid and Toy Story. <laughs> Maybe that's what Sid was doing, just making sacrifices to, like, Cthulhu or something. <laughs> like, what, if there's, what if they, like, make a spinoff where, like, the world, like, becomes this hellish place because Sid, <laughs> like, sacrifices were, uh, were stopped? <laughs> I was going to say, be a really weird twist in the Toy Story franchise of, like, in the first movie, <laughs> Sid just starts, like, trying to summon Cthulhu. <laughs> 
No, it wouldn't even, it would be like Toy Story 4, like it's, it just opens as like, remember how there were no, barely any ads for it, and then like the movie opens and it's just like this post-apocalyptic like hell wasteland, it's like, ever since Sid stopped blowing up toys. <laughs> Pixar, hire us, Toy Story 5, here we go. <laughs> Don't steal this. <laughs> trademark copyright <laughs> so if bill like contacts the doctor and is like what's going on with the puddle like she just disappeared and then the doctor just like runs out of the room and, and bill sees him running down the the grass pathway i guess yeah, she says why does he she asks him why he runs like a penguin with his ass on fire the doctor says that it helps with aerodynamics Oh, I thought he said ergonomics. Oh, ergonom- maybe he said ergonomics. <laughs> Aerodynamics makes more sense. Ergonomics <laughs> is just like, what? <clears throat> but he's looking at the puddle, and eventually he figures it out too, and he's like, oh, well, Heather... He's like, your friend Heather was able to figure it out really quickly because of the star like in her eye. And he eventually, like, he points Bill towards it, and he's like, look, like, what, what do we never actually see when we look in a mirror? We never actually see ourselves. The right way around. Yeah, because this is always flipped. So and Bill notices that her face isn't flipped, and Heather obviously immediately realizes it because one of her eyes is a different color from the other one. Well, Bill notices because one of the buttons on her jacket is on the wrong side in the reflection. Right. So the doctor's like, it's not a reflection. It's like a must be some sort of like video monitoring system. And he notices a bunch of scorch marks. Uh, located around the puddle, and he's like, that's kind of weird. And then he tells Bill to go home. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he says it's not water, and then Bill's like, so if it's not water, then what is it? <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, you should just go home. The doctor stays up late, looking into a microscope. Bill goes home, and here's the shower running. She's like, okay, I'm just going to make some dinner for you. But then she gets a call from her stepmom. X-Files. <laughs> her stepmom is out at a bar. Bill's like, wait, what? <clears throat> so she goes and checks the the shower, but no one's in there. The puddle's in there. It's chasing her. <laughs> Heather comes out of the grate. Bill's like, what the heck? So she runs away. She runs to the doctor, I guess, who's like, I guess, her only other friend in the universe. And the doctor's like, why are you here? And then the water starts coming under the, well, not the water, but the liquid starts coming the under oil. the door. Yeah, the oil. It's living oil, remember? <laughs> Yeah, this is the most OP thing that <laughs> Stephen Moffat has invented. I think it rivals the Ambassadors of Death yeah. on the OP scale. I was actually thinking that while watching it. I was like, this is basically the, the most powerful Doctor Who creature ever. <laughs> it can time travel, it's immortal, and like it can assume any shape and like basically do anything. Yeah. That Stephen Moffat <laughs> power creep. <laughs> the J.K. Rowling of our time. <laughs> J.K. Rowling had power creep too. It's a freaking cursed child. Like all of a sudden the time turners can send you back like 40 years. I understood like none of that sentence. <laughs> You're like, the, that sentence was composed of English words, but the sentence as a whole eluded me. So the doctor gets her into the TARDIS and Bill's like, what are we going to do in this blue box? And eventually he turns the lights on and she's like, whoa. Whoa, you have a kitchen in here. Yeah, she's like, it's a cut through, isn't it? It's a knock through. <laughs> And the doctor takes him down to the vault. Him. Her. And down in the vault, it's because I was already thinking ahead because he meets Nardole in the right. vault. Or at the vault, not in the vault. <laughs> Nardole is in the vault. The doctor locks him up every night in the vault. <laughs> Maybe Nardole's into that. <laughs> He's going to borrow yeah. Avon's leather <laughs> outfit. You heard it here first. <laughs> Wonder if there are any Nardole BDSM fix on fanfiction.net. Yeah, these are the hot takes people are listening to Trust Your Doctor for. But the doctor's theory is that he's like, well, if it's coming for the vault, then we need to know. So he goes to the vault to check the security, and he's like, well, maybe it's not coming for the vault. And then when they're there, the oil comes downstairs. Uh, Bill still thinks it's an elevator at this point. Uh, it comes down the stairs, but then it turns away from the vault to chase after Bill. So the doctor's like, so it's not after the vault, it's after you. Right. So they time travel. The doctor brings them to a war zone. 
<laughs> well, they got, no, they got Australia first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they go to Australia. And Bill's like, it was dark, now it's light. Have we traveled in time? And the doctor's like, of course not. <laughs> We're just in Australia. <laughs> Uh, the doctor says something when Bill gets in the TARDIS the doctor says uh, it's called the TARDIS and uh, nothing can get through those doors and he says you'll be safe in here and you always will be and then I wrote unless your name is Adric or Katarina or Clara or Donna or Amy or Rory then you're not safe or any companion I mean you don't have to die to like be not safe you can just be put in danger like they all were <laughs> I mean I literally wrote in my notes nothing gets through, the, through these doors except the things that do you're safe in here, and you always will be, except when you won't be. Yeah, fell back to when House just took over the TARDIS. <laughs> or the Dream Lord. Or, like, any other time the TARDIS has just been, like, invaded by other things. Yeah. The Doctor reveals to Bill that he's an alien. Right. Because she's like, are you from space? And the Doctor's like, no. No one's from space! She's, she's like, like All right, are you from this planet? And he's like, well, not... This one. <laughs> but Gallifrey is Earth. He should know that. We did postulate that theory in Hellbent. Heaven sent. Stephen Moffat did write in that theory, like, in every way possible, except just flat out state stating it. <laughs> also true. <laughs> but yeah, then the Doctor takes them to the dalek Mavellan War. That's a throwback. So the doctor's like, wouldn't go to the hottest fire in the universe. And Nardal's like, good. And the doctor's like, <laughs> the Daleks. And Nardal's like, not good. <laughs> Through the fire and the flames. <laughs> That's a reference. That's a Guitar Hero 3 reference. <laughs> what a classic. <laughs> Was the best Guitar Hero, in my opinion. I played multiple Guitar Heroes. I'm not just saying it was the best because it was the only one I played. <laughs> played multiple Guitar Heroes. All right. All right. That'll so do pig. That'll I wonder do. how shocked and happy people were that the Mavellans came back. I remember people were, like, pretty confused. They were like, why the Mavellans? <laughs> why are the Daleks fighting the Egyptians? <laughs> That, like, meme image with, like, the guy with, like, Einstein-level hair going, like, aliens. <laughs> From ancient aliens on the yeah. History yeah. Channel. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we see a bunch of Mavellans die. And then the Daleks come out. And Bill's like, what's that? And the doctor's like, that's a Dalek. This was uh, not this entire scene. Well, this entire scene, plus a little more, it was like the first scene they released of Bill as a companion to like introduce people to Bill, like Bill being like, what's a Dalek? And the doctor being like, like the most dangerous being in the universe. Other than me. Other than me. <laughs> not, not including me or the master or literally me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I forgot about me. Mustn't forget she's flying around in that TARDIS too. She's probably on Earth at this point. I'm surprised she doesn't just, like, knock on the doctor's door at this university. I, I mean, me is on Earth for basically every Doctor Who story ever. She leaves Earth, like, at the end of the known timeline. <laughs> that means she would have known the third Doctor was involved in Unit. Hmm. Big finish. <laughs> so they... they well, they actually go to some other random planet first, and that's how they discover the oil can also time travel. Well, that's when they discover that it is oil as well. Yeah. Sentient oil following them through space and time consume any form, any shape, and do anything it wants. It was designed to, like, fix a spaceship, and apparently it just got a mind of its own, I guess. Yeah, the doctor kind of explains why um, it took over Heather, because Heather had this passion or this desire to leave or like travel the world or something like that or just get out of the situation that she was in mm -hmm. uh, which is really awkwardly delivered honestly in the episode um, but the the oil recognized that and formed this like symbiotic relationship and by symbiotic relationship I mean like parasitic relationship is it a parasitic relationship like still symbiotic I, I don't know I don't think so time to ask some Google. biologists <laughs> okay that Google. works too <laughs> <laughs> so 
So they go to this this Dalek Mavellan battleground, and the Doctor gets a Dalek to shoot Heather, and it seems like it works, but it doesn't. Just yeah, it just she, kind of she just comes phases back. through her. Right. She ends up invading the Dalek's shell and blowing him up. The Doctor's like, "Well, I guess we're doomed because <laughs> there's no way to destroy this thing." Time to call up my friends, the ambassadors of death. (laughs) Honestly, if if Stephen Moffat had brought back the ambassadors of death instead of the Dalek Mavellan War, I would have been like, Moffat is literally our messiah. The doctor's like, time to go to a war zone. (laughs) He goes into like the locked vault from the... Maybe that's what's in the vault. Maybe the, <laughs> the vault like, leads death. to the locked room from the Ambassadors of Death with Professor What's-His-Name locked in. He's like, we need to go to a war zone. He just tell, He just goes back to 1973 when they land on Earth, and he's like, this is the darkest day in my timeline. <laughs> you mean 63? 63? Didn't the Ambassadors of Death land in 73? Oh, I thought you meant like 63 when the oh. Doctor landed on Earth. No, but could do that as well. He just goes back to <laughs> Cal and Zor, <laughs> Zor. Zor, whatever his name was. It's like, these are the most deadly people I've ever met. <laughs> anyway, the doctor postulates that if Bill, well, actually Bill postulates this, that Heather keeps chasing her because she promised not to leave without Bill. And right. the doctor says, well, then you should probably like let her go with without her. Let her go, Moffat. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably let her go. And Bill says, okay. But then Heather mind invades Bill and shows her images of like a life that could be. And just like the universe, like the galactic like scale of things, the universal like scale of things. The doctor's like, no, Bill, you got to come back to us. You got to come back. And then Bill's like, I let you go. Heather, and she leaves, and the doctor takes Bill to his office. He's like, all right, let me just uh, try this again. Going to do what I wanted to do with Clara on you. Just uh, come here for a second. Uh, Just going to Donna you. (laughs) Stephen Moffat really likes his, uh, like, doing Russell T things. (laughs) But this time it doesn't work. Bill has read enough sci-fi, and that's actually, we've gotten that throughout the episode that Bill has has read up on her science fiction books. <laughs> yeah, she's a sci-fi nut. Actually, that's when they're in the, the, the TARDIS the first time. She's like, you know, you're probably, I know you're not big into sci-fi, but I think she's an alien. And then she turns around and sees the like TARDIS interior. Yeah. And when they're down at the vault and she finally realizes it's not a cutaway, she's like, it's bigger on the inside. And then Nardole is like, hey, we got there in the end. And he like shakes the doctor's <laughs> hand. Nardole was pretty funny in this episode, actually. Yeah, I I hope that Nardole doesn't cross the like line. I th- I think now he's kind of walking like the line and doing the dance between like pretty funny and kind of annoying. Well, they just have to wait and see. Yeah. Or just watch all of them like tomorrow, and then I won't have to wait. Did you watch the entirety of the next time no, trailer? No, I didn't. I yeah, took good. your advice for once and <laughs> and didn't watch it. Good. When we get to the thing it spoils, I'll tell you what it spoils so you can at least, like, live knowing. It's, they pr- I'm just going to guess probably that it spoils what's in the vault. Partially. It's more complicated than that. It spoils something they successfully kept secret for the whole season except for that one <laughs> freaking spoiler. Anyway. Is it, wait, is it that – because Nardole has this line in the episode – um, when he's trying to explain the the bigger on the inside thing. So is this going to be like one of those things where like the Master's TARDIS was in the Doctor's TARDIS is in the Master's TARDIS and like the vault what? is actually like the TARDIS itself within the TARDIS? Well, I guess you'll like just have to wait that's and my, see. That's my guess. Okay. Unless but- it's another big fake out red herring gotcha moment like freaking Heather's eye. <laughs> well, so... Bill says, like, imagine what this would feel like if someone did it to you. And the doctor's like, oh, but someone did do it to me. (laughs) Then he lets Bill go. And then he's like, (laughs) I guess he's imagining River and Susan talking to him because he tells the pictures of them on his desk to shut up. And the TARDIS makes some weird noises like, you shut up too. And then I guess he changes his mind and offers to let her travel with him. Yeah, he, he kind of implies that it's been a while for him. 
50 years. Yeah. Well, when, when Bill's like, why'd you call me into, into your office? The doctor says, you reminded me of someone. And there's like a conspicuous shot of the Susan <laughs> picture. And you're yeah. left wondering, like, is she Susan? Regenerated? No, no. no, she's not. We never get told she's not explicitly. So, hmm. What if the uh, third doctor is Susan? We never see the what? second doctor regenerate into the third doctor. <laughs> so every doctor we've been following <laughs> since Pertwee has been Susan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Great. And then it ends. And then it ends. Yeah. Overall, I did like this story. Yeah, I did too. Since mm. we're on the topic of Susan, I kind of wanted to talk about Susan here at the end. And I guess just mention that she was a huge part of this episode. What with like the naming of the TARDIS. Uh, if you know, if you're a big enough fan of the classic show or have just watched mm. the beginning of the of Doctor Who. You would know that Su- Susan named the TARDIS. And there's that line where Bill's like, so why do the initials make sense in English? And the doctor's like, hmm, you're the first person to ever ask that or something. <laughs> Calling back to Susan. And there's, of course, the pictures of Susan, which you see like four times in the episode. Also the so, picture of River. Right. So it does seem like Susan and possibly River, I guess, but more so Susan, I think, is going to be a big part of this season for whatever reason. Interesting theory. That kind of ties into what I wanted to talk about, which was uh, this story almost is like an homage to the classic show. And that like even goes down to like the naming of Bill. Uh, if you didn't know, William Hartnell's wife was named Heather. So Bill and Heather in this episode. Oh, wow. <clears throat> huh. uh, that was intentional on Stephen Moffat's part, as far as I know. Um, There's also like a running thing in the classic show of like, uh, like gender neutral like names like Joe mm-hmm. Perry Turlo I, I don't think Turlo is like a real name yeah they, uh, therefore it could be gender neutral I guess but we don't know maybe on his planet maybe on his planet yeah I don't know um, and there are probably a couple others I'm not thinking of Ace I guess Ace I'd say is gender neutral yeah Mel is gender Mel, neutral right so and <clears throat> Bill is in that tradition as well this episode feels like an homage to the kind of classic show in just a lot of ways with the the Bill Heather thing the doctor is extremely alien in this episode he is a lot less kind of personable a lot less human than he was I'd say in series 9 especially when he was traveling with Clara and this whole episode feels like you could almost just drop maybe not the third doctor but you could drop like the fourth doctor or the second doctor or even the fifth or sixth like into the story and it would like work pretty much flawlessly and i think that's interesting to think of like when i was looking back at this whole season i started to realize that like quite a lot of these episodes this season to me feel uh, uh like homages or illusions or do a lot of callbacks to a lot of classic series things and that's interesting and something I want to talk about uh, throughout this season, especially next week's episode, Smile. I want to talk about a little preview. I want to talk about how Smile and Happiness Patrol cover a lot of the same ground and feels very intentional. Huh. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I definitely picked up on that, too. It does. This episode does feel like a classic Doctor Who episode. Uh, and I think it also actually pays homage to the early new series, like 2005, 2006-ish oh, yeah. episodes. Absolutely. With, you know, Bill getting introduced with, like, family drama mm-hmm. uh, is something that had been phased out of the show, I think. I mean, with Rose, like, half of her entire thing was, like, her, her you know, the relationship between her and Jackie and, and Mickey. Uh, and and I, I think I like that, that it's go- returning back to even those to to like I mean like you mentioned some of the classic show roots but also some of the the new series roots that I think the show had been missing um, in a few of the of, of the more recent seasons seven and eight I guess well also <clears throat> like yeah Amy Amy's whole family was erased by the time crack so we didn't get any drama from her family either the same with and Roy we just we we met his dad but he was a very like <laughs> but they cut out the drama between him yeah. and his dad and then much. Clara we we only met her parents like in that flashback and then in the Christmas dinner in Last Christmas so we had no drama with her family either so I think it's like a very Stephen Moffat thing that phased out that drama and then he's kind of alluding to or bringing it back in this episode yeah for sure 
I think that just even the creature itself, I think, is a callback to earlier Doctor Who creatures. I mean, like, look look over the Stephen Moffat era and, like, the, the creatures are no longer, like, those classic Doctor Who monsters. They're more, honestly, more, like, literary, like, concepts or, like, film concepts. Yeah, they're they more become very concept. abstract, yeah. They're abstract. And also, in, in the reboot... And Stephen Moffat era in particular, the, the monster is typically defeated by either killing them or like banishing them. Whereas in this episode, the resolution to the story is a very empathetic, like, I have to let you go so you can go travel kind of thing. Like Heather is not a malevolent being in any way, which is kind of also a throwback to some classic stories where it was just like the celestial toy maker wasn't intentionally malevolent. It, he was just trying to have fun. I can't believe I'm defending the celestial toy maker on this podcast. But, like, Heather wasn't trying to kill anyone, right? It, it got attacked by the Dalek, and it responded. But it didn't want to kill Bill. It didn't want to kill the Doctor. And kill the, Bill. <laughs> the resolution was very, like, it was empathetic and not violent in any way. It was just Bill saying, like, I got to let you go. Like, I have to let you go. Yeah. It's interesting. It is, in many ways, like a soft reboot of Reboot Who. It, if and that feels almost like a throwback to series. What was the series after Liz Shaw, Shaw buggered off? Seven, eight, eight must have. I been. think Liz Shaw was series seven. So like series eight also felt very soft reboot esque in I think a similar way. The Doctor was the same, but they got a new companion, and, and a lot of the structure of the show changed. I mean, here the Doctor's got to stay with the Vault because Nardole's like, you got to stay with the Vault. You can't just go travel. He's like, it's a time machine. So and it feels very like. Pertwee-esque in that way where he's like almost tied down to this location on Earth, but he's still like ducking out for adventures. Sure. But yeah, that pretty much concludes my uh, my little rambling there. Yeah, so onto the sonic screwdriver. Uh, I had unknown purpose and yep. also Nardole uses it to run interference. Which really means just like blowing up consoles. <laughs> yeah. I also have it for scanning with a question mark. I think the doctor uses it to scan something uh Heather, I think, earlier on. Yeah, so despite some of the changes with the, the format of the show starting in this season, glad to see the Sonic Screwdriver is still as overused and deus ex machina d- as ever. The Doctor even brings up the psychic paper in this story, which is a throwback. No, he did? I didn't notice that. Yeah, because when Nardole, when they're leaving to run away from Heather, Nardole's like, you can't leave the vault. And the Doctor's like, if anything goes wrong, I'll get a message on this. And he pulls out the psychic paper. Huh. And then uh, I've got a couple quotes all right, go ahead, because I have none. <laughs> okay. I have the doctor says, uh, I'm very particular about time when he tells Bill not to be late. Uh, that one I don't like so much. This one is, I thought was just like, it's a curious exchange that if you've never watched Doctor Who, you probably like just gloss over it. But later on, you'll be like, oh, that's a thing. But uh, the doctor's looking at his reflection. He's like, that's my face, right? And then Bill says, you're a bit flexible on the subject. And he says, you have no idea. And then... Uh, this one I just thought was funny. The doctor says, hungry looks very much like evil from the wrong end of the plate. <clears throat> and that's it. That's all my quotes. So, if you would like to email us, you can reach us at the doctor at decadentvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts on the pilot. Be sure to check us out on YouTube at Decade of Vegetables. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify at Trust Your Doctor. Be sure to leave a rating if you like the show. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. Next time, we're going to be watching Smile. But until then, the end. <laughs>